Third attempt out here. So without any further ado, roll the intro. This is Epic Drives Western Australia, the channel dedicated to showcasing this great state. Join me, my family and my mates as we travel this truly amazing state we call home and discover what makes this place truly epic. Episodes are released on the first of every month. Why not subscribe? And please don't hesitate to like, share, or comment. And don't forget to click the bell so you don't miss our next adventure. Start at the lakes. I'm gonna get to the Forby track in a couple of k's. I've done this one a few times. The weather's been terrible, so we'll see how we go. Maintained by the Eastern Suburbs Four Wheel Drive Club, the track I'm taking is a loop covering just under 200 kilometres, including the travel from Perth. Taking Great Eastern Highway, I take the right hand turn at the Lakes Roadhouse and travel a dozen or so k's to the start of the track. Sticking to what are normally well-maintained forestry tracks, I soon discovered that the recent rains have left parts underwater and other sections crisscross with ruts coming to the track by running water. reason my eye still air down is the simple fact of small sticks that can damage your tyre. If you've got less pressure in your tyre, like anything like a, a balloon, if it's got a lot more air in it, it's more likely to pop. So I still air down, you know, it's a good excuse to get out of the car, have a walk around. Pulled off the road. We're having a barbie. Just cooking off the remains of the last barbie. I don't know quite what I had on there to make it that smoky, but it is a nice day. It's probably in the high teens, low twenties at the moment. Earlier on, I was talking about tire pressures and reducing them every time you leave the blacktop. And uh, yeah, sorry, the boys are going nuts in the background there. There's a couple of other reasons why it's a good idea to always air down off-road and the first is it reduces tyre wear, as simple as that. And the second and possibly more important reason is it doesn't destroy the track as much as when you've got your tyres fully inflated. So if you drive a track regularly, it's in your best interest and it reserves it for the next lot that come through and if we all follow that principle, then the tracks should remain open. I've done this trip twice before, both times in the drier months and both times with other vehicles. I've never had any problems driving off road here. That is until today. take recovery gear with me on every trip. However, 
No matter how much I persevered with the max tracks, the shovel and the jack, they were all not enough to get me out of this soft, muddy bog hole. I was stuck. Apart from my four-year-old boys, I was alone. And to make matters worse, I had no mobile signal and no response on my UHF. That was a bit of a messy bog. I should have filmed it, kind of missed the whole lot. Fortunately, we weren't too far away from a main road. We took a walk up there and a nice guy, Keith, legend, saw us and he turned around and he gave us a snatch out. So we're back on our way. And I think what we'll do is we'll call it a day today. After that, my confidence has been a little bit shattered. So we're heading back to the road and we're gonna call it a day and do it another day if one of the boys wants me. Catch up. Back again to try this trip. Exactly the same spot where we were stuck yesterday. That was my diff dragging, and this is fairly solid. It doesn't look fairly muddy, but it's sort of rocky. Not only was I stuck in it with the mud sucking me down, but I was hung up on both my diffs. <laughs> Nangaring Road borders the northern edge of the National Park and is part of the original road to York. Surveyed by Philip Chauncey in 1846, Chauncey was also responsible for recording almost all of the Aboriginal place names in this region during his survey. With the orders from John Septimus Rowe, he set out with a local Indigenous man. Unfortunately, he did not record the actual meanings of any of these names and they remain a mystery to this day. Early settlers lost hundreds of sheep in this area when droving their flocks through to York. The cause was York Road poison, one of the gastrobium pea plants that are common throughout this region. Well, once again, it looks like this track has beaten me. I don't have diff lock. I'm not lifted. Pretty much stock standard apart from my tyres. And this, is all that's causing me to not be able to go any further. And the reason is, is because I'm lifting two wheels. So the minute that I uh, attempt it, I just lose traction and stuck up, hung up in the air. So, a bit of a shame, but hey, nice day out. So when you get to one of these things, important thing to kind of do is obviously check how deep it is with a big stick. So let's go do that now. There. Left side 
is fairly sort of soft. So I'm going to try going the right side and I can actually get my right hand wheel on the side of the road. I'm by myself. Normally I'd go through this and have a bit of fun, but if I get stuck, I'm pretty screwed. So let's give it a crack, eh? Not a bad spot. Yeah, I know. Oh, we'll check it out by there. that I'm just one up today is I'm sending snapshots to my wife my beautiful wife Laurie hi honey um, whenever I have signal because I'm with good old Vodafone and if you're with Vodafone you'd be well aware that once you sort of get off the main road or anywhere out of the city really or even in the city coverage is pretty poor so whenever I manage to get a bar I send her a picture she knows my last location and my you know, intended route that I'm taking. So as long as I can stick to that route, if I do end up in trouble, hey, I might spend a night in the bush, but who doesn't want to spend a night in the bush, eh? <laughs> On the homeward stretch now, it's a nice track, it's, it's a lot of it's forestry track. In summer this is quite an easy track. I've done it twice before and if it was a walk in the park, it'd be somewhere I'd bring somebody who'd never been off-road. During winter, different story. It's it's got sections that are they're not extreme, they're just you'd need another car there just in case. And I've done this whole thing by myself and I've run into trouble twice. And if I had another car with me, it wouldn't have been an issue at all. A quick snatch, it would have been all good. I got stuck on the first day and it cost me a walk up to the road to get help. Half of it at the moment is washed out. In winter, it's a little bit more of a challenge. It's not massive. It's taken me three days to do this. No way whatsoever should this track take you three days. I just heard on the side of caution because I was by myself. If you're with somebody else, it is a one day track. It might take me a little while, but I will trip note it. Check out my Patreon page and uh, like, share, check out my other videos, and peace.